Let's make some delicious slow cooked beef ragu. Now this ragu is amazing. It is cooked really nicely and slowly with beef short ribs, which is a type of beef rib, but it's got lots of really nice marbled meat on it. And it creates honestly the most amazing, rich and delicious ragu. Just look at this. I've cooked it with some delicious pappardelle, some thick pasta, and just put it on top. And I've shredded that beef really nicely and covered it with some Parmesan cheese and some parsley. Let's get straight into cooking this. So for my slow cooked beef ragu today, I am using some beef short ribs. Now these are kind of similar to just normal beef ribs, but these have a lot more actual meat on them and less bones and they're much smaller as you can see. So I've bought two packets here and each of these are about 800 grams. So I buy two, it's a nice kind of good size, but the beauty of using the short ribs is that the amount of flavor that comes out of the bones and the beef itself is just incredible. And because there's lots of bones and little bits of connective tissue, I know it doesn't sound very nice, but it creates the most amazing flavor and this rich, nice ragu. And that's what you want when you want a nice Italian ragu. You want a really nice meat. You can use other meats, of course, but um, I think this meat is really nice and it's a nice, rich, um, really nice, really delicious flavor. And if you are worried, there's not actually too much fat on these. You can trim some of those excess lumps off as well. Now, obviously to start this slow cooked meal, I need to chop these into a few smaller pieces and also brown them, of course. Now that's a very important step. But before I do that, I just want to quickly talk over my vegetables. So obviously for a nice base, for any kind of stew or Italian meal, I'm going to chop up my onion, carrots, and celery. Now, I don't know about you, but who can be bothered to actually chop up these vegetables? Because they need to be chopped up really, really small, because you don't want to get chunks of these or any of these vegetables in your cooking. So I'm just going to run down and use my food processor. I just chop them into a few large pieces, and I just chuck them straight in. And it takes a few pulses, and that's it. And you can cook them from then. So I'm going to race away and do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, and done. I'm back with my chopped vegetables. Now the carrot, celery, and onion just create a really nice flavor, and as they slowly cook, they release a lot of sweetness. So as I said, you want these chopped really finely. If you want to use the food processor, just when you blend them, you don't want to turn it into a mush. Just keep that in mind. This, everything's chopped really small. That is exactly what you want to go for. Nothing less, nothing smaller. So now I'm just going to chop up my beef, and I'm just going to brown that off in a hot pan. I'm not cooking them, I'm just creating some color on just a couple of the sides, just to add extra flavor to the dish. Whew, getting a bit warm over the stove there. So I've browned all the beef, it's all looking good. So I've got six pieces here, and they look quite big, but remembering there's that bone running through the back. But as you can see, yeah, they're not too fatty. There's a little bit on the front, which you can get rid of, but they've got really nice marbling, which I can see in here, and it just cooks down, and it is so nice, and the flavor is amazing. But while that's cooking, I have chopped up some bacon. Now, traditionally pancetta would be used, but pancetta is basically pork belly that has been cured. And this streaky bacon is pork belly, which has been smoked and aged, so not quite the same flavor, but very similar. This is gonna add a really nice, another flavor, so pork flavor to the dish. And very traditionally, beef and pork are used together to create a wider range of greater depth of flavor. So here, I've just chopped this into little pieces, and now I'm gonna chuck it into the same pot which I have around my beef in. Now, if there's a large excess of oil or fat, remove it because there's obviously fat in this bacon which will, you know, flavor the, the dish. But for me, I don't have much in there. My beef wasn't too fatty, so I'm just gonna go straight in now into the warm pan. So basically what I'm looking for here is not a crispy bacon, like little bits of crispy bacon. I don't wanna burn it. I just wanna cook this over medium heat and then once it has melted and the fat has rendered down a little bit, I'm going to throw in my blended mix of onion, carrot, and celery. And once that's softened down and cooked a little bit, I'm gonna come along with some garlic, some mushrooms, and a chopped up zucchini. Now that's my choice of vegetables. Garlic for me is pretty, or well, a very important part of this dish, but you again can add what you want. And same as the bacon. If you don't like pork, you don't have to add the bacon. It's just an extra depth of flavor, but it's honestly up to you. Okay, so by this stage now, I've popped in all my veggies, so my garlic, mushrooms, and zucchini. 
Um, again, add whatever vegetables you'd like to. And I'm just going to let these kind of cook down until they all start to soften and kind of get nice. And once they're softened, I'm going to come along with about a tablespoon of tomato paste. We'll let that cook out just for a minute or two. Then I like to add anywhere from a cup to two cups of red wine, or white wine if you'd like, or you can just add some water and a little bit of vinegar if you don't want to add alcohol. The alcohol again helps to break down the vegetables and create a nice rich flavour. So once the alcohol is cooked down for another minute or so, I'm going to come along and add a tin of crushed tomatoes and a jar of passata. So as you can see I have these right here. Um, I'm using some tin cherry tomatoes, you can use whatever you like. The cherry tomatoes are a bit sweeter, which can be nice in some of these um, dishes. Um, and then the passata is just a basic tomato puree. It's also a good time to come along and add a few dried herbs. So I like to add some pepper and salt, I like to add some dried chili flakes, um, and I'd say about a good tablespoon of oregano or dried oregano and about a teaspoon and tablespoon of dried thyme. Now you can add dried rosemary and whatever else again that you'd like to. Um, I like to add a little bit of a dash of some ground cloves sometimes, adds a bit of an extra richness, not too much, cloves can be very overpowering. Um, but now that we've got all the liquid going together, it's time to put the beef back into the pot. And from here, you want to have the beef, you want to have the beef just covered in liquid. And you can achieve this by using stock, it could be chicken, it could be beef, anything you'd like, it could be water. The bones and the short ribs will produce a quite a lot of flavour, so you don't necessarily need too much stock. And I'd almost myself lean towards using a chicken stock over a beef stock to minimise on that extra beefy flavour. Now from here we want to cook it in the oven for I would say, again it depends on the sizes, but it would be about two, two and a half hours at least at 150 degrees Celsius. Now you really want to keep checking these after that because honestly they're not ready until the bone is basically falling out. So if the bone's not falling out, if it's still all tough, you can feel it with some tongs, it's not ready and just keep it and just pop it back in the oven for a little bit longer. Now, don't be too worried either because it's not going to suddenly overcook, it's not suddenly going to burn. At that lower, slower cooking temperature, it's just going to slowly cook down that beef and slowly break and tenderize all that connective tissue, creating a delicious flavor and nice, soft, falling apart beef. Now, also before you pop it in the oven, just a quick side note, you can add some fresh herbs as well. I like to add one or two bay leaves, uh, some rosemary sometimes or some thyme, some parsley, again, whatever you have in the fridge, in your garden, whatever you'd like. So yeah, now that we've got everything in the pot, I'm going to stick it in the oven and I'll see you guys in a couple of hours. Two and a half. Okay, so it's about two and a half hours later now. The beef is looking amazing. I've just pulled it out of the oven. Now something you like to consider here is that the bones will lift out. There can be some little bits of membrane that's left over, which I do recommend removing because all the beef will be delicious, but these are a little bit chewy and it's, just, it's only a thin membrane. You can eat it. but. I do like to just rip it apart and I'll let the beef cool a little bit and just kind of shred it almost with my hands. You can do it with forks, whatever you want to do. Um, and from here as well, the pasta is honestly up to you. With a rich sauce like this, it's quite nice to have rich noodles like pappadelle or um, maybe even fettuccine, but something that's nice and thick or something just to scoop up that really rich sauce in that beef. So here we go, here's our final product and it is looking incredible. The smell is just amazing. I was, I was taking little parts of that meat while I was shredding it. I shredded it all with my fingers and I find that the easiest way sometimes to so sometimes just cut away a bit of that membrane silver skin stuff and then the rest of it, it, I just pull it apart with the fingers and any little bits, there's not many, but sometimes there's a little bit of globby bits of fat. I just wait until it's a bit cooler and just you can pull that apart and just throw it straight in the bin. But the rest of this, amazing. I just chucked all the shredded meat, all the shredded meat back into the sauce mixed it together and it creates this nice, thick and delicious sauce. And I've just topped it with some chopped up parsley from the garden and covered it in some parmesan cheese. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe because it means a lot to me. Anyway, thank you and I'll see you guys next time.